Hey guys, this is Will at Third and Long. Welcome to our Week 10 NFL Predictions video for the 2023 NFL football season. We still have a lot of quarterbacks out, but we have a couple quarterbacks coming back. So hit that like button and subscribe and let's get started. So let's take a look at who's going to win, who's going to lose, and what we predict the final score will be for each of the 14 games coming up this week. Coming up on Thursday night at 8.15 on Prime, we have the 1-7 and seven Carolina Panthers versus the 2-7 and seven Chicago Bears. So the big news for this game is that Justin Fields may be back this weekend, finally. That's a pretty big deal. He's He's been out for, what, the last three to four weeks. He did a hurt his hand. He was dominant when he was playing. He was running the ball. He was throwing the ball. He, he was getting the ball to Moore. They were a dominant team on offense when he went out. A lot of people thought he might be out for the season. He might not come back. They might try to trade him. But word is that he might be back this weekend. If he does come back, look for him. Look for Moore to pick up right where they left off. Coming into this game, Chicago is the number three rushing team. They have the number 14 total offense. Panthers are the number 30th offense. So they've been having some issues moving the ball. So look for the spark to get the Bears here if he does come back. Bears are four-point favorites. I have Chicago getting the win here, 28-20 to and covering. Next game we have moving into Sunday at 9.30 a.m. in Frankfurt, Germany. Again, another Europe game really early in, in the morning for us here. We have the Colts at 4-5 and five versus the Patriots at 2-7. and seven. Colts are two-point favorites. So this is two matchups here of teams that are not having good years. As we know, the Patriots cannot get first downs. They cannot score to save their life. They're only averaging 15 points a game. Whereas the Colts, they have the number nine total offense, but they have a pretty bad deep. They are without Richardson at quarterback, so Gardner Minshew has been filling in. He can have pretty good games. He can have pretty bad games, but they can rely on the rushing attack. They have Moss. They have Jonathan Taylor. They probably have the deepest running back room in all of the NFL Patriots. They have Mac Jones, and he's not very good at all. So a lot of people actually think the Patriots could win this game. That is definitely possible. This is Bill Belichick. You never know with him because he can bring a really good defense sometimes. Sometimes he gets torched. But I am actually going to go for the Colts to get the win in Europe, 23-20, to so a low-scoring game, and they will cover. The next matchup we have at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the 4-4 four and four Texans. What a game C.J. Stroud had last week. He had 470 yards, five touchdowns. The guy has 14 touchdowns this year, only one pick. Hands down, the offensive rookie of the year so far. And they'll be playing the Cincinnati Bengals at 5-3. and three. Bengals are a seven-point favorite. So Bengals are on a four-game winning streak. Burrow is back to Joe Burrow. He started out the year god-awful, was hands down the worst quarterback the first three weeks. Then he completely flipped. He got healthy, and he's completely back to who he was previously. So they are lighting it up on offense. So who's going to win this game? We have Cincinnati coming in as seven-point favorites. Texans are hot as anyone on offense right now, spreading the ball out. But they in no way have the weapons that the Bengals have at the wide receiver position, mainly Chase. Now, Texans have good weapons, but they don't have a Jamar Chase. He's a big difference maker. So I actually am going to go with Cincinnati to continue their hot streak and to get the win here, 28-20, to and they are going to cover. Could the Texans beat the Bengals? Because the Bengals are due for a loss. They've won four straight, so it's going to happen at some point. That could very well happen because they're very hot right now, and they're lighting it up on offense. But if this game's a shootout, I think that the Bengals have the better weapons, personally. The next game we have at 1 p.m. on Fox, we have the 5-4 and four New Orleans Saints at the 5-4 and four Minnesota Vikings. New Orleans comes into this game as two and a half point favorites here. So this is kind of a crazy game here because obviously the Vikings are really banged up. They don't have Jefferson and they lost Cousins for, for the year. Now, Jefferson might be back this weekend, but it's looking like he won't be back. They have Dobbs came in. He was only on the team for like one hour, came in and won the game last weekend. I don't know how that happened but he got the job done. So props to them. Vikings are on a four-game winning streak. Now, obviously, a lot of that was done with Kirk Cousins without Justin Jefferson. So they were really hot on offense. But with him being out, even though Josh Dobbs got the win last weekend, I'm not putting my money on that to continue. Saints are one of the better teams on paper, but they haven't been performing like that on offense so far this year. 
although they have been doing better the last few weeks. They have a really good defense, so they come into this game with the number 10 defense in the country um, and the number 10 offense. Vikings have the number 6 offense, a really bad defense, but the 6 offense, a lot of that was done under Kirk Cousins throwing for 350 yards per game. So Josh Dobbs will not be able to do that. So I'm going to go with the Saints to get the win here because they have the defense to rely on. I have Saints winning 30-20 to and covering that spread. Next game we have at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the 3-5 and five Packers at the 5-3 and three Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh comes into this game as three-point favorites. So this is going to be a really low-scoring game because both of these teams cannot score any points to save their life. Looking at the offenses, Packers have the 28th offense and the Steelers have the 31st offense. So really bad offenses. They both do not have anything going on at the quarterback position. Pickett, not doing well. Jordan Love, not doing well. Guy cannot throw past five yards. So this is going to be a really low scoring, boring game. They both have decent defenses. If I had to put my money on it, I I would obviously go with, with, with the Steelers with TJ Watt as having the better defense, but the Packers have a decent defense. However, this is at Pittsburgh, so I'm going to go with the Steelers here in a low-scoring one, 21-18. to So it's basically a push right now, but that might shift throughout the week. Next game we have at 1 p.m. on CBS, we have the 3-5 Tennessee Titans versus the 3-5 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So the matchup of the 3-5 teams. Tampa Bay comes in as one-and-a-half-point favorites here. There's this. So this is almost virtually a pick em. They might get this down to one point here. This is a pretty close team here. Both teams have okay defenses. Tennessee has the better defense. Tennessee has a really bad offense, though. They're the 27th offense overall. They were only averaging 18.5 points per game. Now, that was mostly under Ryan Tannehill. I've not held back on Ryan Tannehill. The guy was complete garbage, has always been garbage. They should have never signed him to that contract. But Will Levis has been really good the last two weeks filling in at the quarterback position. So if you are a Titans fan, you should be pretty happy for the future right now. And they still have Derrick Henry. But the Buccaneers, they're not slouches. They have Edwins, they have Godwin. So they are loaded at the wide receiver position. Baker Mayfield has not been the problem this season. He has been moving the ball, but the defense has been waffling the last few weeks. But Tampa Bay is the favorite. They are at Tampa Bay. I think Tampa Bay has the better offense And that's what should get them the win here. They have been sliding back the last few weeks, but they're due to get the win. Should have almost got the win last weekend, but look for them to get it this weekend. I have them winning 24 to 21 and covering the spread. Next matchup we have is at 1 p.m. on Fox. The San Francisco 49ers at 5-3 versus the Jacksonville Jaguars at 6-2. San Francisco three-point favorites here in Jacksonville. Both of these teams had bye week last week. 49ers did get young, so he should help the defense out. They might get Debo Samuel back. Trevor Lawrence is not really lighting things up compared to last year. So 49ers, though, under Brock Purdy, has been playing really bad on the three-game losing streak. Hopefully the bye week bought him some time to clear his head. Hopefully he gets back to just being a game manager. Don't try to do too much. Look for San Francisco here to rebound and finally get back on the winning streaks. And look for the 49ers. I have them winning. 30-17 to and covering that spread. And they can definitely rely on their 7th ranked defense. Next game we have at 1 p.m. on Fox, we have the Cleveland Browns at 5-3 versus the Baltimore Ravens at 7-2. Baltimore, 6-point favorites here. So Cleveland comes in with the number one ranked overall defense in the country. Biggest question mark is, what's going on with Deshaun Watson? Will he play? Will he not play? He did play last weekend, But you're never too sure with him because he's been cleared for four weeks now and has not played. He keeps complaining about different things happening. Does the guy want to play football? We don't know. If he plays, they can make this a really good game because they have the number one defense. But Baltimore is probably the most rounded team as of right now at, at this point of the season. So they have the number four offense, the number three defense. So it really doesn't get much better than that. And they are the number one running team in the country. Lamar Jackson is lighting things up right now. So even though the Browns have a pretty good D-line, look for Baltimore to make them miserable. I have the Ravens winning 24-21, to just not covering that spread. Next matchup we have is at 4.05 on CBS. We have the 4-5 and five Falcons versus the 1-8 and eight Cardinals. So 
Falcons obviously have a lot of weapons on on offense. They don't usually utilize them properly, but look for Bijan Robinson to get a lot more touches because a lot of people have been complaining they do not use him enough. So look for him to get a lot more rushing here and probably get about 80 to 100 yards running. Now, the Cardinals at 1 and 8. They have absolutely nothing going for them. However, they might be getting Kyler Murray back. They might be getting James Conner back this weekend. That's a pretty big deal. I don't really see the purpose of playing Kyler Murray. Why do you want to take the chance to win a game? You want to bomb. You want to go 1-16 and 16 this year and get the number one pick to get Caleb Williams. Why even take the chance to win a game? But if they play Kyler Murray, the guy hasn't played in like, seems like 30 years now, but he might be able to move the ball. So Atlanta comes into this game as one point favorites. It's virtually a pick on basically right now, but I am going to go with the Falcons who have a pretty decent record, you know, so far through this year. They're not a very good team, but they have a lot of weapons. They just haven't been coached properly. But look for them to get the win here. Look for them to get back to 500. I have the Falcons winning 23-17 to and covering. Next game is at 4.05 on CBS. A pretty good game here. We have the Detroit Lions at 6-2 and versus the LA Chargers at 4-4. Four and four. So Detroit is two and a half point favorites here. They are loaded. They have a top five offense. They have a top five defense. They can move the ball. They can throw it. They can run it. And they have a really good defense so far this year. Jared Goff having a great season so far. 2,200 yards, 12 touchdowns, five picks. Chargers, they beat the Jets this past week, but that was a really sloppy, low-scoring game from the offense. Now, Chargers have a lot of holes on their defensive side of the ball. But Justin Herbert has to do better than that. Now, the Jets have a really good defense, so they kind of shut him down. But they have a lot of weapons. They have Eckler. They have Allen. Mike Williams, he's still out. But Justin Herbert can definitely spread the ball out. So never overlook Justin Herbert because the guy can end up throwing for 300, 350 yards. So he can keep you in the game. But I'm going to go with the Lions because they're the far better rounded team. I have Detroit winning 30 to 27 and covering the spread. Next game we have is at 425 on Fox, the New York Giants at 2 and 7. They're going absolutely nowhere versus the Cowboys at 5 and 3. Cowboys are 16 and a half point favorites here. Massive spread. Cowboys coming off of a loss this past weekend, but they fought really well. Dak Prescott played really well versus the Eagles. And they are loaded on offense. CeeDee Lamb has really been stepping up. But look for Pollard to be getting some touches. They have to get the running game back on track. Giants, I mean, they have nothing going for them. Daniel Jones, he's now out for the year. They have Saquon Barkley. They really have nothing. They have no defense. They have no offense. They won't be able to stop anyone. And they're the lowest scoring team in the country. Averaging, I think it's like 13.5 points per game. So just completely pathetic. Look for the Giants to get steamrolled here, 35-14, to 14, and for Dallas to cover that huge spread. At 425 on Fox, we have the Washington Commanders at 4-5 and five versus the Seattle Seahawks at 5-3. and three. Seattle, 6.5 point favorites here. So the Commanders, they have Sam Howe, the most beat-up, most sacked quarterback in the country. But sometimes he has really good games, and he can light things up. Seahawks, they are one of the more rounded teams. They have a decent offense. They have a very good defense. Now... With Geno Smith at quarterback. He's not having the year that he had last year, but he's still serviceable. Look for them to get back on track this weekend. They had a sloppy loss last weekend. They need to get the running game going. They need to get Walker back in the game. They have the better weapons. They have the better defense. Seattle, six and a half point favorites here. I have them winning 28 to 21 and getting back in the win category. Coming in at 8.20 on NBC, we have the New York Jets at 4-4 four and four versus the Raiders at 4-5. and five. Jets, one and a half point favorites here. So the Jets, they obviously lost to the Chargers. This should not be a primetime game here, but it was supposed to be Rodgers versus Garoppolo. That obviously didn't happen for either team. But with the Jets, they were on a, what, a three or four game winning streak. They were due to lose. They lost to the Chargers. They have a top five defense loaded on the defensive side of the ball. They do have the number four ranked defense in the country. But Zach Wilson, that's the biggest problem right there. Raiders fired Josh McDaniels, but that actually seems to have lit a fire under the team. They played really well last weekend. I'm going to go with the Las Vegas Raiders to get the upset win here just because the Jets have to win solely on defense. They have to beat you like... 
15 to 12. And I don't know if you'll be able to hold the Raiders in. So I'm going to go out on the limb and say the Raiders win this one 23 to 17, just because the Jets offense can't keep up. Our final game Monday night at 8.15 on ABC. The 3-5 and five Broncos, they've been playing pretty decent the last few weeks versus the Buffalo Bills at 5-4. and four. Buffalo 7.5 point favorites here. Bills have been sliding since they went to Europe, basically. They've just been falling apart since they lost the Jags. They cannot fall to 5-5. Five and five. That would be pathetic. People would be getting fired here. People would be trashing Josh Allen. They must right the ship. They need to get back in the win category. Like I said, they cannot afford to fall to 5-5 five and five or they'd be one of the biggest letdowns of the NFL this season. Broncos' defense has been playing better since they gave up 70 to the Dolphins. They are serviceable. Russell Wilson is having a pretty decent year so far this year. Sean Payton, not a fan, but the Denver Broncos have been playing better the last month. But let's be serious. The Bills have Josh Allen. They have Cook. They have Diggs. Look for Buffalo to get the win here. In the cold, they'll win 30-20, and I have them covering. So that's my breakdown of the Week 10 NFL predictions. Hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks.